Hello everyone, my name is Shreyas Gizre and welcome to the India-China conflict series. In the first part, we saw the history of India-China conflict from 1949 to 2003. And in the second part, we discussed about the history of India-China conflict from 2003 to 2014. This video is going to be about what happened since 2014. Now, if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and click on the i button above or link in the description section below to watch both the part 1 and part 2. And do watch both the parts so that you can get the context to this video. And if you have watched both the parts, then let's get started. In casting sorrow all through my day. After rising to power in 2014, Narendra Modi didn't just have the challenge to transform India, but he also had to transform his image. The riots of Gujarat 2002 had put a dent in his image, so much so that he was banned from entering United States because of it, and the ban was lifted only after he became Prime Minister. After getting elected, the first thing he did was he called all the Sark Nation representatives to his swearing-in ceremony. This included the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Nawaz Sharif. From this act, Narendra Modi wanted to show that he is willing to develop relationships with the neighboring countries, both friends and adversaries. Along with this, his frequent contact with White House in the first year after taking charge also showed that he is not just an elected politician but also a statesman wanting to shape India's foreign policy. In the same light, the first India-China summit took place in 2014 where 12 agreements were signed which included agreements regarding correction of trade imbalance by getting more access to Chinese markets. Also, inviting Chinese investments in India where China committed to invest $20 million in the time of 5 years. Cooperation in railways was also the part. Now, in this, the highlight was उन्होंने कैलाश मानसरोवर यात्रा के लिए नाथुला से एक नया रास्ता खोलने की अनुमति दी है यह नया रास्ता उत्तराखंड के रास्ते के अतिरिक्त होगा नाथुला के रास्ते से कई सुविधाएं हैं मोटर से कैलाश मानसरोवर तक यात्रा की जा सकती है इससे विशेष कर बूढ़े तीर्थयात्रियों को लाभ होगा तीर्थयात्रा कम समय में पूरी की जा सकेगी और अब भारत से काफी मात्रा में तीर्थयात्री कैलाश मानसरोवर जा सकते हैं आफ्टर दिस इन 2015 नरेंद्र मोदी विजिट टू चाइना वेयर मोर 24 एग्रीमेंट्स वेयर साइंड व्हिच इंक्लूडेड कोऑपरेशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड स्किल डेवलपमेंट कोऑपरेशन बिटवीन फॉरेन मिनिस्ट्री एंड द सेंट्रल कमिटी ऑफ कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना कोऑपरेशन इन माइनिंग एंड मेनी मोर नाउ आई एम स्क्रोलिंग डाउन स्लोली so that you can watch it on screen. Also, I have put the link in the description section below so that you can go there and read as well. After this, there were few MOUs signed here and there, but nothing major. The last known agreement was in 2018, where agreement was signed regarding sharing info on the flooding of Brahmaputra River. Now, as we all know that during rainy season, when Chinese open the gate of the dam on their end, the river gets flooded and the water rushes into Assam. These cause floods on Indian side, destroying the the agreement was made to minimize such incidences. Apart from all these agreements, there were two informal summits that took place, one in Wuhan in 2018 April and the other was in Chennai in October 2019. Now remember the last time I said this, any agreement, no matter how precise, were not going to work anyway. That the agreements are not going to cut solutions to long-standing border disputes. Yes, I still stand by my statement because even after these agreements, India faced three major standoffs in the Modi era, which were standoffs in Chumar in 2014, standoff in Burtse in 2015, and standoff in Doklam in 2017. Of course, the government handled it, but that's the point. The agreements couldn't prevent the standoffs in first place. In fact, many analysts believe that Narendra Modi actually had an appeasement policy towards China, wherein he removed China from countries of concern list provided e-visas to Chinese nationals. Also, the trade imbalance rose to around $60 billion. This wasn't it. In 2016, India had first given visa to Uyghur 
ह्युमन ऍक्टिव्हिस्ट दोलकुन इसा टू अटेंड अन इव्हेंट ऍट धर्मशाला बट देन कॅन्सल डिट बिकॉज ऑफ चायनीज प्रेशर नरेंद्र मोदी हॅड सेम अप्रोच ऑफ मनमोहन सिंग ऍज द मनमोहन सिंग गव्हर्नमेंट कजोल्ड विथ द पाकिस्तान नरेंद्र मोदी कजोल्ड विथ चायना नाव आय नो पीपल आर गोइंग टू हॅव डिफरंट थॉट वेअर पीपल सपोर्टिंग मोदी विल बी लाईक इफ यू आर विथ मोदी यू आर विथ इंडिया इफ यू आर नॉट विथ मोदी यू आर अँटा इंडिया अँड पीपल अगेन्स्ट मोदी विल बी लाईक ब्रो आज तू मेरा दोस्त आहे साथ में बिचिंग करते हैं नाउ बिफोर वी जंप टू एनी कंक्लूजंस आई जस्ट वांट टू मेक अ स्टेटमेंट दैट आई बिलीव दैट नरेंद्र मोदी डेल्ट विद चाइना बेटर देन हिज प्रेडिसेसर एकदम इन्होंने वक्त बदल दिया जज्बात बदल दिए जिंदगी बदल दी नाउ रिमेंबर द लास्ट टाइम आई सेड दिस द बॉर्डर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वाज सो पुअर दैट ए के एंटनी द देन डिफेंस मिनिस्टर कंसीडर्ड इन पार्लियामेंट दैट वी हैव लॉस्ट द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रेस विद चाइना दैट्स द एग्जैक्ट थिंग व्हिच नरेंद्र मोदी चेंज्ड आफ्टर कमिंग टू पावर the border road initiatives were made a priority to an extent where the money allocated to the initiative in the last 4 years was 11800 crores which was earlier 4600 crores not just the allocation but the speed of construction was ramped up to 470 kilometers per year which was almost double of the previous rate which was 230 kilometers per year as a result of this up until january 2020 75% of the targeted roads were complete even in the time of pandemic and amid the india china conflict government decided to transport 11800 labor workers from jharkhand to complete the border roads the government despite chinese objection was in no mood to give up on the infrastructure race this wasn't it the modi administration also heavily invested in the defense deals from k9 vajra the south korean tanks howitzer the american tanks apache and chinook helicopters to french rafale and many more in fact the defense spending increased to a level where in 2019 according to the swedish think tank stockholm international peace research institute that is sipri india has become the third largest military spender in the world just behind us and china india's defense capabilities have enhanced to an extent where the country has now become a defense exporter apart from this china has a market share of around 72% in india's mobile phone market now india cannot just ban chinese phones so it played the next best move increase the number of local mobile phone manufacturing units from 2 before 2014 to more than 200 today now even though the most phones manufactured are chinese but since the manufacturing is in india it leads to economic growth and increased employment as a result of this india became the second largest mobile phone manufacturer in the world after china it's like if you cannot defeat your enemy then you make profit out of his profits now after the deadly attacks of uri and pulwama india gave a befitting reply to pakistan by surgical strike and balakot air strikes both the strikes were in the pakistan territory but china still didn't take any strong action even though pakistan is its close friend in fact after india's actions both the times china just said that both the countries should exercise restraint prevent escalation and solve issues through dialogue through this china proved that it may not like india's actions but it can't really do anything about it because india is of economic importance this was considered as success of india's china policy and the same continued in the case of masood azhar Well the question is certainly asked why China which had steadfastly opposed the listing of Masood Azhar in 2009 when India brought the proposal to the United Nations Security Council after the Mumbai attacks and then 2016 after the uh, after the Pathan Court attacks 2017 after the Uri attacks when the US UK and France brought the proposal why China that had uh, always opposed it has changed its mind remember in March this year again China had put a hold on the listing proposal just uh, weeks after the pulwama attack um so the turnaround is being attributed to a number of causes but two at least seem key one uh, post the wuhan summit where prime minister modi met uh, with president xi and the resultant bonhomie between the two countries seems to have led uh, to china's decision uh, to accept india's consistent demand for the listing uh secondly the combined pressure of the us uk and france who had even threatened china uh with uh, with the possibility of a public open vote at the un uh, security council if it did not accede to this uh to this listing uh, this shows that india didn't just focus on the china policy but also improved its ties with world powers like us uk france etc in fact our ties with these powers have strengthened so much 
that US is openly supporting India against China. Even few days ago, America's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said this. So I've spoken with Foreign Minister Jayashankar a number of times uh, about this. Uh, the Chinese took incredibly aggressive action. The Indians uh, have done their best to respond to that. I, I put this in the context of General Secretary Xi Jinping. There aren't many neighbors uh, that can satisfactorily say that they, uh, they, they know where their sovereignty ends and that the Chinese Communist Party will respect that sovereignty. And we have attempted to communicate to the Chinese leadership that we are serious about this when I say we not just the United States. We will start very shortly a dialogue with our EU friends on uh, how we collectively can respond to this challenge from the Chinese Communist Party. This shows that we have international support. But then the question arises that if our China policy is so decisive, then why did the border standoff happen again in 2020? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to ask another question. That is India the only country currently facing this problem? Hell no! The chief editor of Indian Express, Mr. C. Rajamohan, wrote an article where he shed light on China's land disputes in the South China Sea. China has land disputes with Indonesia's Natuna Islands, which are 1500 kilometers away from the mainland China. Country like Philippines, which were old allies of US, after Duterte came to power, decided to side with China. But China even started trouble there, which compelled Philippines to go back in US shed. In other reports, China has started disputes over the Senkaku Islands with Japan. Also, China tried to threaten Australia, but these can be understood as there are reasons to do it, like past history with Japan, Australia's demand for probe into COVID problem. But China is creating problem for countries like Canada, which never had any major problem with any other country. Forget Canada, they also threatened a small country like New Zealand. This aggressive behavior of China, when put together with Sri Raja Mohan's report, we understand that China's aggression to India has nothing to do with India's China policy. It's just that China believes that now it has the military power to alter the status quo. Now, everything we spoke up until now, one question still remains unanswered, and that is if agreements are not able to stop border conflicts, then why are they made in the first place? We have seen this both in the time of Manmohan Singh as well as in the Modi's era. Well, from what I have read and understood, I believe there are three main reasons to this. First, India is not a superpower. Second, India is a responsible state. And third is the Dal Chawal analogy. Now, there is nothing like Dal Chawal analogy, but it's just something that I came up with so that I can explain to you the concepts better. Now, first reason, unfortunately, India is not a superpower. We do aspire to be one day and we will become one day, but that day is unfortunately not today. We cannot just arm twist China into giving us what we want. Now take the example of Russia. Russia annexed Crimea and the West world got angry and imposed sanctions. But Russia survived it because it has large oil reserves and a strong military establishment. Even though the sanctions hurt them, they were rich with resources and also arms. So by selling them, they survived. But that is not the case with India. We cannot just go around picking fights with China. And that's why agreements are being made so that the hot issues can be eased out. Now, from our independence to now, time and again, India has always proven to the world that India is a responsible state. Let's set two examples. First one, when world was becoming bipolar, the sides were being taken between USA and USSR. India took the stand of getting non-aligned with any one of them. Nehru administration started the non-aligned movement, which consisted countries which thought like India. As a result of this, today we have good relations with both Russia as well as US. This showed how responsible we were in dealing with the geopolitics. Now example number two. In the past, during the world war, US painted Hitler as the devil on the wall, claiming that if he gets his hands on nuclear weapon, then it will be a catastrophe for the world. Saying this, they convinced the scientists to build a nuke for US. This gave birth to the Manhattan Project. And US developed a nuclear technology with the help of scientists like Oppenheimer and few scientists from the Euro. When the tests were successful and Heisenberg lost the nuclear race to Oppenheimer, US made a nuclear weapon and used it on Japan. That is Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now we know what kind of destruction that caused. Now in contrast to this, the countries who had nuke didn't want India to become a nuclear power. But when India carried out successful nuclear testing, 
the first thing that we did was we signed the first no use policy which means that india will never use nukes first unless it is attacked by one now this is how we showed the world that we are a responsible state now munmohan singh and narendra modi are the ones in the line to maintain this reputation achieved in last 70 years we cannot just take any hasty decisions and risk this all these agreements are a way to show the world that india is ready to solve its problems in a diplomatic way not just the world it also embeds trust in our neighbors that we are willing to maintain good relationship with them now the dal chawal analogy now whenever we have hot dal chawal mixed up and served we don't really grab the bite in the middle because our hands and mouth both will burn what we do is that the edges of the food gets cooled faster so we start grabbing bites from the edges reaching to the center now juxtapose this with india china border situation border conflict is the hot part we don't put hands directly or they will burn which they already have that is 1962 war but there are many other things that are repercussions of the conflict and not the main conflict like soldiers of two army getting into a brawl china discharging water from the bambaputra dam to cause floods and destruction in india these are the surrounding things to the main conflict by making agreements like protocols regarding carrying firearms conduct of soldiers or sharing information on opening of dam gates we start resolving surrounding effects of the main conflict this is a slower diplomatic approach now what happened this time in 2020 where did the standoff start how india dealt with it what are the current situation and what will be the future of india china relations hereafter are the points which we are going to cover in the next and last part of this series links to the material referred are given in the description section below if you like the video please hit the like share it with your friends and family and please do subscribe